Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving how to find the displacement from a velocity time graph. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says the velocity time graph for an object is shown below. Find the magnitude of its displacement. So remember displacement is a vector first of all, and the magnitude of displacement basically just means the distance, the size part of the displacement. So we're basically just trying to find a distance value here in meters. We don't need a direction. Well, you can see here in the velocity time graph, we've got a uniform acceleration followed by a constant velocity, followed by a constant deceleration to rest. And you'll notice this graph has already been split up into shapes to make it a wee bit easier for you to begin with. So we've got rectangles and triangles, and you'll see I've labeled each one one, two, three, and four. So what we can say first of all is that distance is equal to the area under the velocity time graph or displacement is equal to the area under the velocity time graph. But we just use distance here since it's asking for the magnitude of displacement. We can then write down how to find our areas. So for the first shape, we've got a rectangle, so that's length times breadth. Then we're going to add that to the area of this triangle, which is shape number two. So that's a half times base times height. And then we add on another length times breadth for this rectangle, and then another half times base times height for this triangle. So substituting in the numbers, we get six times four for the first one. So that's the length of six there times the breadth of four, and that's plus half times the base times height for this triangle. So a half times the base is a half times six times the height of four up to 10. So that's a half times six times six, plus the length times breadth for this rectangle. So six to 12 gives us six for the length, times 10 for the breadth, so that's six times 10, plus another half times base times height for this triangle. So from 12 to 16, we have four. So we have a half times four times the height of 10, and putting all that into your calculator should give you an answer of 122 meters. Lastly, question two says the velocity time graph for an object is shown below. Find the magnitude of its displacement. So again, we just want to find distance here, i.e. the size of the displacement with no direction. So you can see in this velocity time graph this time, we've not got any parts split up for us. We'll need to do that ourselves. But firstly, we've got a uniform acceleration followed by constant velocity, followed by constant deceleration to rest. And then we have motion in the opposite direction. So we have an acceleration in the opposite direction and then another constant velocity and then a uniform deceleration to rest. So we can start by saying that distance is equal to the area under a velocity time graph or speed time graph. And then what I'm going to do is split up the graph into shapes of rectangles and triangles. Because remember, those are the two easiest shapes that we know the areas of. So first of all, you can see we have a triangle after four seconds. So I'm going to put a line down there just to break that up. And then we've got another rectangle and then a triangle. So adding another line there lets us see the shapes. And similarly, we can do the same for this shape over here. So we can split it up into triangle, rectangle and triangle as shown here. So now I've got six shapes and I'm going to label them one, two, three, four, five and six just to keep us right. So let's write down how we would find the areas. So first of all, we have a triangle, rectangle, triangle. So that's going to be a half times base times height plus length times breadth plus a half times base times height plus the areas for four, five and six. So we're going to add that to the area of a triangle plus the area of a rectangle plus the area of a triangle. So that's plus a half times base times height plus length times breadth, plus a half times base times height. And now we can look at the graph and pick out the numbers. So for shape number one, we've got a half times four times 10, which is given here. Plus for the rectangle, we've got four to six, gives us length times breadth. So we've got two times 10, which is given there, plus a half times base times height for this triangle. So that's a half times four from six up to 10 times 10, so a half times four times 10. And then over here for shape four, we have a half times the base, so that's 10 up to 12, which gives us a half times two times minus 10, which is given here, plus length times breadth for the rectangle. So 12 up to 14 gives us two times minus 10, which is given here. And lastly, we have the area of this triangle here, so a half times the base two, so that's a half times two times minus 10. So that's given there. So you can add all of these up either in your head or in your calculator, and that should give you an answer of 20 meters. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.